Good morning. Well, we're tugged up, ready for day three. Yes. Out to get back on the train, uh, go and see a few more things in Berlin. We're hoping to go to the War Museum and a few other things, which we'll bring you and show you as we go along. So, off we go. Onward and upward. Onward and upwards. So, back on the train to Alexanderplatz and a quick change down to Vorschauerstrasse and then a short walk to the East Side Gallery via the Oberbaum Bridge. The Oberbaum Bridge was built in 1724 originally as a wooden drawbridge. They built again from steel and brick in the 19th century. It's a stunning architecture with towers and spires and it carries the road and the rain across the River Spree. A short walk away is the East Side Gallery. The East Side Gallery is a renowned open air gallery showcasing a significant section of the old Berlin Wall. It's covered in murals and located into the Mühlenstrasse area of the city and it's well worth the hop. The Berlin Wall was erected in 1961 to separate the East Berlin, which was under Soviet control, from West Berlin, which was controlled by the Allies. In 1989, the wall was brought down and reunification of Germany commenced. The East Side Gallery emerged as a way to commemorate this event. There are 105 murals stretching 1.3 kilometers, and in 1990, the East Side Gallery was created as an expression of hope, freedom, and unity. The artwork provided a vivid and powerful visual. The murals reflect political statements, social commentary and personal stories. In 2009 they were restored with many of the original artists being involved. It's difficult to know exactly how many people were killed crossing over from east to west. But at least it's thought 140 people were killed. Some of them were very young. In the three decades that the war was in place, some were shot, some were electrocuted on the fences and some drowned in the River Spree. The count is an approximation and could be higher. These crosses tell the individual stories of those involved. So this is Friedrichstrasse and it's the main shopping centre and the main shopping street in the middle of Berlin. We'll have a walk down here now and try to keep a hand on my wallet. <laughs> We have problems though, because there is a deep suspect here. Have to go shopping now. Yes. <laughs> and the good thing is, you can take your dog in the shops. What could be better? Can't quite see me wearing that in the motorhome, but you never know. Marty's gone into the DDR Museum to learn all about life living in East Germany. So me and Pops are just sat here while I'm enjoying a nice coffee and I'm just enjoying the view. I'll show you where I am. So I'm sat just in front of the Berlin TV Tower. We've then got the, ta the Berlin Town Hall. The church you can just see through the trees is now a museum. And then we're coming round to the Humboldt Forum, which is now an art centre. And then just behind the corner is the church from 270 steps I went up yesterday and the DDR Museum is just down the steps towards the river. And I'm just enjoying watching people go by and spending time just looking and sort of trying to work out, looking at fashion and trying to work out what nationality they are. Well, and we've been in an interesting museum to say the least. Choice of pictures now. The Urban Nation Museum of Contemporary Art is an international or global hub for urban artists. It focuses on street artists, graffiti, and other forms of urban artistic expression. The DDR Museum, located across the river from the Berlin Cathedral, offers a deeper understanding of the various aspects of life in East Germany. We're now pulled up in another plaza after a couple of hops on the uh, underground. And we're going to look at the uh, statue of Kaiser Wilhelm, or the Kaiser Wilhelm's church, in a minute. Before that, we need some lunch. So this is the setting tech, check this out. It looks very nice. Let the start with anything to go by. The fish fillets with orders should be fine. It's 
Is that a lot of cakes? It's not lovely. It is three different types of fillet fish with scampi and rosemary potatoes. For 11 euros? But yes, so it's something like that, yeah. Not bad. Not bad at all, is it? That's very good. This is the Kaiser Wilhelm Church. It was built in the late 1800s and damaged quite significantly during World War II. And they've just basically left it as it was since the damage was caused. And you can see, I guess, where the, uh, uh, probably rather a large stained glass window should have been. There's just now a big hole and you can see the inside of the church. Before we go back to the van, I've got to check something out. Opposite the air or Stellplatz are two old air raid bunkers that are preserved, so we're going to check them out. Come and have a look. We have to walk up these stairs. There, come on, let's go. Sign the first tier. I almost used to go in there. The lock's locked up. You just like you can use the steps at the side. So I'll walk up there. Let's go. Here we are. Where the once anti aircraft guns and now a sculpture. If I take you around this side, you should better look down the stealth path. Street photography, or humanist photography, is a passion of mine. Done well, it's an art form, it captures visual art and that has the power to capture moments and emotions, freezing them in time and preserving them for future generations. The point is to capture the everyday struggle of human life in the places we visit. It provides a unique perspective on the places we visit and allows you to see the diversity through the lens of the camera. It's not just about taking pictures of people, it's about capturing the essence of human life and in this case what it means to be a Berliner. JFK famously said, all free men wherever they may live are citizens of Berlin and therefore as a free man I take pride in saying, ich bin ein Berliner. I hope these pictures help you understand that feeling of what it means to be a Berliner. No visit to Berlin is complete without visiting the Holocaust Memorial. It consists of 2,711 concrete slabs arranged in a grid pattern over an area of 19,000 square metres. The design aim is to provoke a sense of disorientation and unease, symbolising the chaotic and oppressive nature of the Holocaust. It stands as a reminder of the collective responsibility to us all to ensure a just and inclusive society free from discrimination and prejudice. Adjacent to the memorial is the Underground Information Centre. It provides concepts, if it was needed, about the Holocaust and the systematic persecution of Jews by the Nazis. It includes personal stories, documents and photographs and testimonies, offering a deeper understanding of the human impact of the Holocaust. Hello. Hello. Well. That's Phew. two weary travellers. <laughs> Three third, weary travellers. Third day is on his feet. Dog, yeah. yeah, dog's done very well, hasn't she? She's done brilliantly. Yeah, we've yeah. Uh, we've been out walking for about, we've done about 30 miles in the last three days. Plus we've used the train extensively, so you can tell that there's plenty to see in Berlin and we've only just scratched the surface, really. We could do, we could stay here for a week or two weeks, but uh, we always have that saying, always leave something till next time. 
But the train's been a success, hasn't it? Train's been very successful. Yeah, all the public transport looks to be very, very good in and around Berlin. Yeah. yeah. We had a ticket yeah. that uh, enabled us to use buses, trams, trains, and uh, it was on the Berlin Welcome oh, card. Um, ours was valid for forty-eight hours. Um, if you want any more information, then please just put a comment in below, and we'll reply to you so we don't bore you with all the details. But it was um, it it meant that we could take the dog on all the public transport. That's both sets of trains, trams, and buses for forty-eight hours, unlimited. So you just plan to clarify. Otherwise, you'd have had to buy the dog a ticket. Yes. So the pass was frozen. It threw the threw the dog in free, which yes. is good. Hey, Stella, we did put a picture up on social media of the dog in its muzzle. This one. Um, our dogs, we got a soft, a really soft muzzle with plenty of room. She can still give her a treat through it. She can still lick you through it if she wants to. She's very comfortable. Um, right, wrong, or indifferently, that's the rules here. Mm. And uh, in comparison to likes of Spain, where they're not allowed on at all. In fact. Although Spain have very recently allowed dogs with muzzles on on the on the main intercity trains, I don't know what's happening with the local trains or the trams, but uh, but it was a, it was a strict no no, which did confine us a little bit. Mm, yeah, it did. Yeah. So we're just great yeah. to be able to do that. And Poppy's quite happy in a in a muzzle. She's uh, she's quite good. Ask her to wear a rain mac, a raincoat. Yeah. <laughs> That's a totally different story. That's a completely different story. Don't we? Here she is, yeah. star yeah. of the show. Yeah. Doesn't like to be left out. No, she knows when the camera's running. So really recommend Berlin. Um, we've had a great time here. We've had a great time, yeah. It's been but, wonderful. And nothing was super expensive. It was all right. We, we, we didn't feel robbed off at all. And what we did have was quality. We had lunch today um, out in a nice restaurant, really nice cooked food, mm. fish restaurant for 32 euros, including drinks. Yeah. Uh, and so a starter and a main course. Mm. So And that was downtown Berlin. So we were very happy with that. Mm. So all in all, we think it's been quite good value for money and, and good quality with it. Berliners themselves are quite like them. Very welcoming, not too fussy, just straight down the line. Uh, this is our life. We're getting on with it. We're quite happy that you come here. But you don't get a sense that they're overtly um, slavish to tourism. Mm. We're just getting on with things. And it's a very, very interesting place. Um, Post-war history is, is very interesting. And we saw today that, uh, incidentally, with that ticket we told you about gave you discounts to some museums. Excuse me. So, like when they went to the DDR museum today, we got a twenty five percent discount. Twenty five percent discount on that. So that was uh, that was pretty uh, pretty good. And so on that note, we're going to pack up. We're going to Poland tomorrow. Yeah. So stay with us. We hope you enjoy our travels. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you can. Um, unfortunately, we don't like hassling people as we say. But unfortunately, the, the channel doesn't grow. It doesn't get recommended to wider viewing. So it really helps us if you enjoyed it. And as always, any questions, please drop them in the comments below and we'll get back to you as quickly as we can. Thanks for watching. Martin out. Helen out.